we're gonna go through five tips to improve your pivoting. Tip number one is learning where your weight is. Learning where your weight is on your feet is one of the most crucial key elements to learning to pivot correctly. Just standing, where do you feel your weight? Is it more on the ball of your foot, which is the front part, or is it more in your heel, which is the back part? Do you have an even distribution of weight between your entire foot? So, I would like you to put your shoulders back and lean kind of like with your shoulders back and your waist full in. Do you feel how your weight is on your heels? When your shoulders are up erect and back, your weight is more on your heels. Now lean a little bit more forward. Put your shoulders in front of your waist. Do you feel how your weight went to the ball of your foot? Look at, lift up your heels. So here, my weight's on my heels. You should feel it, you should be able to lift up your toes. Here, my weight is on the ball of my foot. I can lift up my heels. Rock back, lift up your toes. Rock forward, lift up your heels. Now, bend your knees slightly. So body mechanics, proper body mechanics is knees over toes. So see my knees are bent too far, they're way overextended over my toes. Knees over toes, this is not enough, that's just right, okay? Hips are where? Well, they're over my heels. Lift the balls of your feet up. Now you can lift the balls of your feet up easily. Most pivots on kicks are done on the ball of your foot. So you need to feel that proper weight distribution. Let's talk about how that applies to some common stances you use in the martial arts. Forward stance. On your front foot, where is your weight? If your knee is bent, you should be able to lift up your heel. Check this out from the side view. It's on the ball of your foot, right? On your back leg, where is your weight? Well, you have to lean forward to lift up your heel. It's more on your heel or more evenly distributed on that back leg. Look at my hip positions affected there. Oh, now it's really on that heel. I can't even lift up my foot. Here, okay, then I can lift up my front toes. All right, let's talk about a back stance, right? So in a back stance, most students are taught that 80% of the weight's on the back, 20% on the front. Your instructor may teach you more of a 50-50 stance. Either way is fine, but think about those weight shifts. This is the basics of balancing. Can you go from a back stance and push forward? Go from your back stance, push forward and up. There we go. Now you're learning a little bit about how your weight is distributed. In our next tip, we're gonna learn how to apply what we just learned. Tip number two, how to shift weight from one leg to the other. In order to be fast at kicking, you have to be able to shift your weight from one leg to the other. That means you have to be able to shift your weight and then pivot on that foot correctly. I'm gonna turn sideways. If my shoulder is lined up and my hip is lined up here, where is my weight? Is it more in my back leg or more in my front leg? If you said back leg, you're right. Now where is my weight? See how my hip is in between my two legs? My shoulder's in between my two legs? It's evenly distributed, right? Now where is my weight? My weight is on that front leg. That's the leg that's bearing the weight. I can lift up my heel nice and easy on the front leg, right? So let's practice. We're gonna shift from the back to the front. Now when I shift my weight onto the back leg, I can hold balance and pick up the front leg. When I shift my leg, balance. Shift up, shift up, shift up. Hold up your hands, shift up, shift up, shift up. Okay, those weight shifts are really, really, really important. So if you're having a hard time lifting your leg, maybe you're in the center. You can lift up still from the center, right? But before you lift your leg up, you have to move your body over a little bit to get that weight shift. Or you're using sheer muscles in your legs, right? Instead of the whole body, giving yourself some leverage from your body weight and the ground. All right, so practicing those weight shifts is super, super important. Shift to that, 
shift to the front, shift to the back, shift to the front. Now don't make it noticeable. Shift to the back, shift to the front, shift to the back, shift to the front. Because when you're kicking, you don't want to telegraph. So if you do a big like this, people will be able to tell what you're doing. So the object is, you'll learn it big, so that you understand it, and then you're gonna make those shifts really small. Look at my weight is where? Back or front. My weight is where? Back or front. Slight, slight movement. And then as you move up and higher belts, you're gonna learn how to read those movements in your partner to be able to predict what's gonna happen. Tip number three, hitting proper alignment while you're in motion. All right guys, can you do 40 sets? Now let's build some strength and durability in your pivots, ready? So now you're gonna add a little bit more difficulty. You're gonna step forward, shift your shoulder over your knee, pick the lead leg up. Step forward, shift your shoulder over your knee, pick the lead leg up. It can be a roundhouse or side kick, doesn't matter what chamber you use, as long as it's the correct chamber, ready? Step forward, pick the leg up. Oh man, that's hard, why is it hard? Because my shoulder is not over my knee. Now it's easy, right? Step forward. Oh man, that's, this is hard. Why is it hard? My legs are straight. Legs bent, shoulder over the knee, pick it up. Here we go. So you're gonna do one, pick it up. Two, pick it up. Now, 10 sets of those until you have no errors. So if you do this on one of them, oops, that's an error. Start over, you're counting from one. If you do this, see how my pivot was late? That's an error, start over from one. So you have to have 10 sets of these with no errors. Then what do you do next? Well, you go to 20 sets, no errors, and then you go to double time. And then we'll add the next stroke. Tip number four, how to catch timing and balance errors in your pivots. Now we're gonna talk about the actual body mechanics of the pivot and the proper body alignment. Most students have a hard time with pivoting because their body isn't aligned properly. Let's say you're in an open position, guard position. Slide your feet together. Slide them out. Now when you bring this back foot in with momentum, start to move the front foot forward. If I move my front foot first, I told my partner what I was gonna do. We call that telegraphing the move. See what I did? Boom, boom, right? Some instructors teach shifting that way for safety for beginners. It's okay, but as you advance, you'll wanna put those two things together. Slide. If your legs are straight and you try to do that move, it's not gonna feel right. Did you see, and I over-exaggerated, my weight was on my heels. I was leaning up or back. My knees might not have been bent. So if my legs are too straight and I pull together, ooh, I feel that in my knees. If my legs are too bent and I'm leaning too far forward, now I'm off balance falling forward. If my legs are bent and I, my knees over my toes, and my hips back, then I have really nice alignment. That's a half a pivot. So you might use this half a pivot for what kick? A front kick, possibly a crescent kick, or the beginning of a crescent kick, the beginning of a side kick, and maybe the beginning of a roundhouse kick as well. So this half pivot is really, really important. Now, a lot of students, so back when I learned a roundhouse kick originally, we were taught to pick our back knee up and pivot little turns around. And that's great. It gives great power in kicking to bring your leg around. But most beginners don't have enough strength in their ankles to pull that off. So six months later, you might pull off a nice roundhouse. Here's a shortcut. You're gonna take, turn your hips, bring your feet in, Pivot the feet the other direction while your body is in proper alignment. Check this out. You're gonna come, here's your half pivot, and your full pivot is with the momentum of your legs stepping out. Look at that again. Here's a half pivot, full pivot. Here we go, half pivot, full pivot. Now, you can stop here while you're learning, but you don't really wanna create pauses in your kicking. So it's better if you can turn, feel it, turn. 
Here's what students do. They get stuck. See how my weight is back? And then they can't finish the turn, and they finish it afterwards. That's really bad alignment because you're gonna rip that knee out. Or they get stuck going this way, and they, they stand up, and they go to step out forward, the lights are straight, and again, they have to turn it. Here's another thing that you'll see students do, is they'll turn out, step, oh my goodness, that foot is there, that knee is turned out, but my body's moving forward. What do you think that's gonna do to my knee socket? Well, yeah, you got it. It's gonna start tearing those tendons in that knee socket. Very, very bad for alignment. So here's an exercise that's super simple. It's almost so easy that students kind of bypass it and they don't always do it. You're going to step forward, pivot, step forward, pivot. Now those knees should come in and touch and open, touch and open. It's almost like there's a magic button on your knees. Boing, that's when you pivot. Boing, that's when you pivot, right? Okay, ready, step. Step. Now, make sure you're looking forward and go backwards. Step. Practicing it going backwards. Step. Getting that alignment. If it's not smooth, think about your shoulders. Are they forward or back? Your knees, are they bent or straight? I recommend that you need to be able to do 10 step forwards, 10 step backs with no errors at just a regular speed. Once you've got 10 at a regular speed, then you're gonna go for 20 of them. Once you have 20 at a regular speed, then you're gonna speed it up to where you can do double time. So if you were timing yourself at 20 sets at uh, 40 seconds, now cut that down to 20 seconds before you go on to the next step. All right, so now you have a feel for where your body alignment is. Let's take it up a level and take your foot from the ground straight up. So here we go. When do you pivot? When your knees come together, right? So now instead of sliding my foot forward, I'm literally going to pick my leg up. Boom. And I'm going to pivot when my leg is up. So I lift it from the ground. Boom. I'm going to lift it straight forward. When I come straight forward, my knees align. I'm going to spin. Knees align. I'm going to spin. Now you've got smooth pivots. I mean, one. Two, go, one. Two, go, one. Two, good. Now what you're gonna do, practice those 10 and 20, no errors, and then go to the next step. Tip number five, probably the hardest thing to do, is how to pivot when you're stepping back or out. Stepping out. The biggest error I see in stepping out is people leave their foot and they don't pivot at all. And then you're not set up for the next move. You can't, you don't have options. You've only got one or two things you can do at that point. So let's take a look at uh, what backing out would look like. See how I backed out, I left my foot there? Now here's another thing people do, is they back out and they leave their foot a half a turn. So what do I got there? I got the front kick. Do you have a roundhouse? I'm not without pivoting my hip over, I don't. Do you have a side kick? I'm not without pivoting my hip over. Do you have a crescent kick? So really, my hip position is only set up for one option, one kick, right? But if I back out and I can get that full turn, then I'm set up for just about every kick but a front kick. A side kick, a round kick, a crescent kick, a hook kick. I've got like five tools in my arsenal that I can use at that point. So how do you do that? How do you pivot when you back out? Well, you've got to really about when to turn and honestly this one takes a bit of practice so let me come forward a little bit it's pivoting backing out forward forward back back do back all the way down the mat stepping back go back to that stepping drill now go backwards and see if you can pick your knee up i want you to use a side kick position so that's going to tell you if you really hit it or not right pick your knee up boom your knee up, boom. All right, and then get the timing of picking your knee up faster and faster and faster and see how quick you can get those pivots as you back out. Was this helpful? 
Make sure to like our page, share us, and if you're interested in the level two tips for pivoting, make sure you comment below the word pivot. Have a great day.